If so, Marcel has an all-consuming confection just for you. Old-fashioned chocolate layer cake on Death by Chocolate. Hello, thanks for joining us. I'm Marcel, your host and guide to chocolate enlightenment. If you love chocolate, I mean really love chocolate, this episode of Death by Chocolate is just what the doctor ordered because we're going to make an old-fashioned chocolate layer cake as well as a delicious hot liquor sauce. Now there's no better way to enjoy chocolate than to do it in layer after layer after layer and that's what our old-fashioned chocolate layer cake allows us to do. First things first, we'll begin with our batter. And this is a cake batter that literally melts in your mouth. And one of the steps in making this batter is being careful how we melt the butter. The butter has to be melted very, very slowly and allowed to look exactly the way that it does here. Very creamy in consistency. I've used a double boiler, a two quart, two and a half quart saucepan with a little bit of water on low heat and very slowly manipulated the butter with a rubber spatula and allowed to melt once again very, very slowly. What happens if we melt this too quickly, we get what we have here in this bowl. And for point of example, I've melted some a little bit rapidly and allowed the butter fat to be separated from the milk solids and the water. And if we tried to use this for our batter, we would end up with a cake that would be a little bit on the greasy side and also wouldn't have the nice texture that we have in those old fashioned layer cake. Talking about melting in your mouth, chocolate melts in your mouth as you probably know. And, and that's a fact, it melts. The melting point of chocolate is just about body temperature. So when you put a piece of chocolate in your mouth, the lining of your mouth starts to absorb the heat from the melting of the chocolate and it creates a pretty nice sensation. I'm going to be chopping just a little bit more chocolate at this point. And we've grated about 10 ounces of chocolate total, uh, removing two ounces as I have here, which we'll use to finish off the cake. The remaining amount will be folding in the batter. But isn't that a nice thought, thinking about that melting of chocolate? You know, chocolate really does something else that I want to share with you. There's a component, a substance in chocolate called phenylethylamine. And what that fancy word does is it slightly elevates your blood pressure and your heart rate. And they tell me that it's a sensation that's not unlike having an orgasm. Uh, I don't know, maybe that's why people love chocolate so much, but anyway, let me get back to our step here of buttering and flouring two nine by one and a half inch cake pans. Next step, we want to sift one and a half cups of flour. I think I'm blushing. <laughs> and we're going to sift that one and a half cups cake flour now. And after we've done that, we're going to put eight egg yolks in our mixing machine here with uh, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. And the reason we're sifting the cake flour, of course, is to be certain that we have a nice smooth flour and that will definitely help the texture of this cake. This cake is very similar to a very classic French cake called Genoise. But you know, I'm going to tell you another secret here today. This is our day for little secrets. Is that actually Genoise was invented by the Italians in Genoa. And then the French absconded with this recipe, and I don't blame them because it's one heck of a recipe. All righty, let me put my sifter to the side. We'll get back to that flour a little later on. We have our eight egg yolks, as well as three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. Goes in our stand-up mixer, and we go on high speed right away on this thing. Boom, high speed, about a minute, and we want the egg yolks to be slightly thickened and have a nice yellowish color to it. Just going to take a second here. Ooh, and that's about what we have now. Now let me tell you, now we're going to put the mixer on low speed. And I think we can do that and uh, still go through the conversation here. If you're not using a stand-up mixer, uh, what I would suggest is that the next step that we're about to do now is that you do that first. And actually, I have already done it to speed things up a bit, and that's our egg whites. 
I've whipped six egg whites along with the remaining half a cup of sugar and I've put it in the refrigerator and I'm going to use that to finish off our batter. If you're doing this with a handheld mixer or with a hand whisk, do be certain to do the egg whites first because if we allow the egg yolks to sit at room temperature without being constantly in motion, uh, w there's a chance that they may separate or become lumpy. So uh, keep the mixer on low. We'll pick up our egg whites at this point. Once again, six egg whites whisked until stiff but not dry along with our half a cup of remaining and see these nice very soft peaks at this point. Okay, so now we want to add our flour and we'll do that while the egg yolks and sugar mixing on low speed. I've got a nice big piece of parchment paper here too by the way which definitely helps this process. And what I would do at this point is actually stop the machine for a second and use a rubber spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl. And this is an important step to, to be certain that all our ingredients are being incorporated. And even when you're using a stand-up mixer like this, it is very important because sometimes the whisk is not getting to all the areas in the bowl and you might have some of the batter that's clumping up there. Okay, so let me put that back on. And then the next thing we're going to do is uh, add the, the butter. And as you can see, this butter has stayed really nice and creamy. And that's exactly where we want it. Okay, continuing to beat on low, to whisk on low, I'm adding the melted butter. I should really just call it creamy butter because the melting is what we don't want here. We don't want it completely melted. I, I want to remind you of that because it really does change the consistency of this recipe if we, if we allow the butter to totally melt. Okay, at this point I'm going to stop the mixer. We'll remove it, remove the bowl. There we go. And now we'll fold in one third of the egg whites and that helps to lighten the batter. And if we folded all the egg whites in initially, what happens there is then we start losing some of the ear in the mixture. So just one third added to the batter, Whoop, maybe a little bit more in deliberate strokes here and then we add the remaining amount of the egg whites which I will do using our rubber spatula again to get everything inside the bowl okay and then is the best part and we don't even have to add that to enjoy it and that's our chocolate usually get a little smidge in there for the chef See if we can appropriate some of it. There we go. That was our grating blade that we used to do the chocolate. And let's see what we got going here. There we go. You can tell I do that all the time, right? And now we're going to fold this in. And it really is a beautiful batter. It has this speckled appearance to it that I really love. And now we're going to pour that into our two cake pans, separating evenly and then using the rubber spatula to smooth it out. And then we go into a 325 degree oven. It's going to take about 25 to 30 minutes. And when we come back, we're going to prepare our icing as well as the hot liquor sauce. So we'll see you in just a few seconds. When we return, chocolate, chocolate, and more chocolate as Marcel continues preparation on his old-fashioned chocolate layer cake. Welcome back, fellow chocoholics. As the saying goes, everything old becomes new again. And when you taste the icing and hot liquor sauce we're preparing this segment to go along with our old-fashioned chocolate layer cake, you'll be wishing everything we did was old-fashioned. Although I think you'll agree, there's nothing new about the enticing powers of chocolate. So we have our cake baking in the oven, and now it's on to the icing and the hot liquor sauce. We'll remove the cake, in fact. I believe they've finished baking. And let's take a look here. Looking good. I'll set them out here for you to take a look at. And I have a toothpick, which I will use to check and if the toothpick comes out dry then we know that we have 
We have takeoff here with these cakes, and they're ready to go. We'll allow them to sit on the counter to cool. Uh, if you want to place them on a rack to get some air circulation underneath, uh, that's also a good idea. Let me close the oven door here. And we'll start with our icing. This is really a, a wonderful and light chocolate icing. And you may wonder how it could be so light with, uh, with so much butter. Well, it's all in the technique. And we start out with a half a pound of butter. And I'm going to actually start out putting uh, the components to the recipe, or most of the components, in the bowl away from the mixer. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have quite a bit of cocoa to add here. And if I try to shake it into the bowl uh, as I have it on the mixer, we'll have cocoa spewing about. So the uh, best way to do it is get down inside the bowl and drop this cocoa, this three quarters of a cup of cocoa, gently so it keeps inside the mixing bowl. And then we have our quarter teaspoon salt, which helps bring out all the flavors. Now we'll put it on the mixer. And I'm using a paddle. Set that to the side. And then we'll start out on low speed. And let me caution you on that. Uh, once again, with having so cautiously placed the cocoa in the bowl, if we started out on high speed here, I'd, I'd look like the, uh, the original cocoa man. So a little slow to begin with. And it's also a good point to bring out, whoa, is that the butter should be softened. Uh, if it's very hard when we try to do this step, uh, once the cocoa will not be incorporated into the mixture. So we just start it out a little bit, and then I'll use a rubber spatula to scrape the bowl down. And then we'll add our teaspoon of vanilla. And I love what the vanilla does in this recipe, giving it a very soft undertone. And it really is very subtle. And vanilla, I think, for me, is one of those ingredients that I can use an eye measurement on as long as we're uh, not too far off the mark. And then we have a third of a cup of heavy cream. Let me check my recipe here. And actually, that was half and half cream. I, I thought I wanted to go back and, and be certain. And there's nothing sh ashamed that you should be ashamed about checking in your recipes when you're baking about the total ingredients. Uh, better to err on the side of caution and check back than to make a mistake and, and add too much or too little of an important component. Okay, what I've done here is I've got a lot of confectioner's sugar here. I've got four cups, and it will be a little easier to add it to the bowl by placing it in a piece of parchment paper. And that goes in all of it, all at once. And then once again, and I've got a little over anxious with the cocoa. I'm telling you, started out slow, and it didn't take too long. I was trying to cruise along. Start out very slowly, and then let it start going. And before we boost it up to medium speed, I'll use my spatula and scrape down the bowl. Let me get a flat spatula here. OK, we'll scrape down the bowl here. And then I'll move on to making the hot liquor sauce while this is mixing. This will take about three to five minutes. And we, what we're trying to do is, of course, incorporate some air into it. And we'll set that. I'll set that on low. I probably would do it on high, but I thought you might not be able to hear me on, on the following step here, the hot liquor sauce. We have our cream and butter. I have, I better check again on my cream. I have one and a half cups of cream and nine tablespoons of butter. And I brought that up to a boil. And then I'm adding one cup, a tightly packed cup of brown sugar, and then one cup of granulated sugar. And I want to use a whisk here. Normally, I have a ladle in here because if the cream starts boiling, we need to have something to reduce the bubbles so that the cream doesn't boil over the sides of the pot. Uh, I want to use a whisk here because I want to very quickly whisk the sugars into the hot cream and butter to dissolve the sugar. And if we're not doing that, then we're going to have a very grainy sauce. OK. That, that's looking very good. And I'm not sure if you can tell. You know what I'd like to do here is show you with a spoon. And if you see how nice and smooth that's become, and there are really no granules at all from the sugar, beautifully smooth. OK, let me put my spoon aside. Normally, I would allow this to cool for about five minutes. When I say normally, I'm, I'm trying to get this done here. We've got this party going on, and they're all going to be waiting for this old-fashioned cake. 
So I'm trying to, to get moving. I might take a chance and do this step, but if I have plenty of time, I would, I would wait about five minutes to add our cocoa. I have one and a half cups of sifted cocoa. And better, again, we're talking about being careful here, is to wait the five minutes for the cream and the sugars to cool down a little bit, because if it's too hot, our cocoa might scorch when we add it to this mixture. So we'll place these tools on the side, and we'll go ahead and add this. I think it's going to be all right, but once again, if you have the luxury of time, I would wait a few minutes, let it cool down, and we'll use a whisk here to get it incorporated. After that, I'm going to keep it in a, in a double boiler. I have my saucepan on the bottom and a glass bowl on top, and we'll keep, it's not called hot liquor sauce for nothing, and we do want to keep it warm. So as soon as I incorporate my cocoa, I'll be pouring it in here. And then we're going to come back and assemble this cake, our old-fashioned layer cake. So we'll see you in just a bit. Don't go away. Marcel puts the icing on the cake when we return. Hello, I'm Marcel Desonier, host of Death by Chocolate. Now you can create the same elaborate chocolate confections right in your own kitchen with my new book, Death by Chocolate. From simply the best chocolate brownie to sinful chocolate devastation, I'll give you easy-to-follow, foolproof recipes to satisfy every chocolate lover's desire. To order your 144-page Death by Chocolate book, call 1-800-435-0800 with your credit card ready. We're back with Marcel and Death by Chocolate. In a few moments, we'll be putting the icing on the cake. But right now, I'm developing a relationship with this hot liquor sauce. And if I don't leave to go do my cake right now, mm, I got to do this, though. Wow. Woo. And that is a jolt. That's the incredible part about chocolate. Let me, let me cut this cake. Mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blush again, as I did when I was telling you about these wonderful things that chocolate can do for you. At this point, I am cutting our cake in half. We're bifurcating the, the layer here. And I've already cut one and have it going. And let me show you what this looks like under here. Look at the speckles. That's our speckled cake. I will put some of our chocolate icing here. And there's a, there's a good degree uh, of icing here, so you don't have to be too conservative. Uh, spreading it around, getting a nice layer. And then I will slide this. I'm actually getting a little bit of cake, a little cake for the chef. I'm going to have to start saving some for the chef's helpers here. OK, nice layer. And then we slide this, actually just slide it right off onto the first two layers that we've started. Let me get that out here so you can see it. And then we'll put the, the layer with the speckled side down the bake side down. Well, it's all baked, but uh, that's the layer that was inside. And now we'll start covering the whole cake with icing. And you can put quite a bit on top here. And we start on top, and we layer it, as I'm doing here, working with, with some deliberate strokes to get the chocolate around. And then we start on the side. But I've got an idea that by the time I finish this cake and that I put a very liberal dose of hot liquor sauce both under the cake and maybe even drizzle a little bit over the top, that any slight imperfection we won't worry about. So actually, let me take one here that we've already started that has the, because I want to show you this final step here. This is a whole cake quite nicely frosted all the way around. The two ounces of remaining chopped chocolate, the grated chocolate, we can put all of the chocolate actually on a plate like this and then take a nice handful and apply it to the side of the cake, allowing the chocolate to fall back into the plate. And then this keeps your counter really nice and clean. And see, I, I really want you to see how I'm doing this step because it, this is, I think, quite a nice professional touch to the cake and it's quite easy to do, and there's plenty of chopped or, or grated chocolate here to accomplish this step. 
So we go around getting a big handful. I'm getting quite a bit on the counter too, but uh, it'll be easily wiped. Just like that. And then coming back around, I see I've got some empty spots here. So that's our finishing touch to this cake. And uh, the next thing, of course, is to get a, a, a serrated slicer and to heat the blade of it and wipe it dry and then and then to cut through the cake and to be rewarded with a bite of heaven, our old-fashioned layer cake. To create the old-fashioned chocolate layer cake, first prepare the speckled chocolate cake batter. For that, you'll need half a pound plus two tablespoons unsalted butter, eight egg yolks, one and a quarter cups granulated sugar, six egg whites, one and a half cups cake flour sifted, 10 ounces semi-sweet chocolate finely grated, Separate the batter between the two prepared cake pans and place in a preheated oven at 325 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. After cooling the cakes to room temperature, remove the parchment paper and refrigerate for 30 minutes. For the chocolate icing, we begin with half a pound unsalted butter, three quarters of a cup unsweetened cocoa, one quarter teaspoon salt, four cups confectioner's sugar, one third cup half and half cream, and one teaspoon pure vanilla extract. Keep the icing at room temperature until needed. Now on to the hot liquor sauce. For that you'll need one and a half cups heavy cream, nine tablespoons unsalted butter, one cup granulated sugar, one cup tightly packed brown sugar, one and a half cups unsweetened cocoa, and one quarter teaspoon salt. Bring the cream to a boil, add the granulated and brown sugar, stir to dissolve the sugar, then allow to cool before adding dry ingredients. Here you go. I've got my cake and I'm going to eat it too. A delicious old-fashioned chocolate layer cake with a decadently delightful side of hot liquor sauce for your chocolate pleasure. Thanks for joining us for the Learning Channel. I'm Marcel Desaunier wishing you sweet dreams. We now conclude our evening of fine living on the Learning Channel. Brought to you by the wine cellars of Ernest and Giulio Gallo, who invite you to take a new look at Chardonnay. But now, stay tuned for TLC Presents, coming up next. <laughs>